The average time to complete my second exam in STATS 2 is 95.82 minutes with a standard deviation of 14 minutes. Find the probability that a class of 60 students has an average completion time of more than 100 minutes. Okay, so what we want to do here is to basically um, use the graphing calculator to find the probability that a class of 60 students has an average completion time of more than 100 minutes. The phrase average is important here, right? There's no mention that this data is normally distributed, but if I look at the fact that the class has 60 students, we're looking for a sample, we have a sample size basically there that's greater than 30. So we can assume that sample means or sample averages for a class of 60 students would have a normal distribution because the sample size is larger than 30 and under the central limit theorem we can assume that that means that the bell curve applies here. So in the problem we're going to be using the bell curve essentially because of the fact that the sample size is large. As long as the sample size is over 30 and we're looking for the average to be of a certain amount then we're able to use the bell curve. So let's go ahead and do that then in the problem. Let's go ahead and use the information they gave us, draw a bell curve, and then we'll use the graphing calculator to finish the problem up. Okay, so I'm going to draw my bell curve. And they tell us that typically the mean for the completion time is going to be 95.82 minutes. That's the mean they give us. Then they go on to tell us the standard deviation normally is 14 minutes, but that's for an individual student, the standard deviation. For the sample mean, x bar, so sigma for x bar, that number is going to be a little different. We're going to have to divide it by the square root of our sample size. Now our sample size was 60. We were dealing with groups of 60 students here. So basically what we have is the mean, right, that they gave us. We don't change that at all. That remains the same. And then we have the standard deviation for x bar, which is going to basically be the standard deviation they gave you, divided by the square root of n, our sample size. In this case, our sample size was 60. And then we're looking for the probability that it would take a class of 60 students an average of more than 100 minutes. So we're dealing with the average. So this line down here is now going to be called x bar. The mean is 95.82 minutes, right? We're looking for the probability that it would take a class more than 100 minutes. So 100 is on the right-hand side of 95.82. So we're going to be looking for the probability the values are greater than this, right? So what I'm going to do very simply then is to go ahead and enter that information into my calculator, basically using the normal CDF key. But I'm going to be sure to enter this standard deviation instead of the 14 by itself, right? And then otherwise, the problem becomes exactly the same as all the other ones we did using the graphing calculator. We're looking for the area or the probability that something lands in this side of the curve where the shaded tail is. So we're basically looking to find the area of that tail. And what we want to give the calculator is the left number, right? The left number that starts off that shaded region. And then we want to give it the right number. Now I'm going to say that number is 10 to the 99th power, the calculator's version of infinity. So we're going to call that the right number then, right? And then, of course, we have the mean and the new standard deviation, which is based on the fact that we're talking about the sample average being greater than 100. Okay, so let's enter that stuff in our calculator. We'll have second, we'll have bars. Then from there, we're going to enter in option number two, which is normal, CDF. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to the left number will be 100, comma, the right number, which is 10 to the 99th power comma, the mean, which is 95.82, comma, the standard deviation, which is going to literally be 14 divided by the square root of 60. We can enter it in the calculator just like that. All right, so let's go ahead and do that, and we'll have our area for the problem. So here's my graphing calculator, and we're going to go ahead and say that we're doing uh, second bars, take option number two, then we're going to enter 100, the left bound of the shaded region, comma, 10 to the 99th power, which is the right bound of the shaded region. Then the mean, 95.82, right? Comma, the standard deviation, which is a full 14 divided by, then we have to enter the square root, so I'm gonna hit second, the square root key, type 60, close it up, close the parenthesis finally at the end for the overall statement, hit enter, and we finally get the answer of 0.0104. So only about a 1% chance of that happening. That's it.